Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Health Made Simple Show. I'm your host, Dr. Barr, and today we're going to do a deep dive into none other than the topic of women and weight loss. Gentlemen, if you are listening, practitioners, if you're listening, yes, 90% of this will still apply to males, but there are some very specific nuances, and it's really why I'm doing this podcast. And listen, I know there's probably about a thousand, gazillion, billion different podcasts and books and everything written about women's health and especially weight loss. This is my, this is my uh, two cents, if you want to call it. My two cents has been a journey of working with women for the last, um, you know, close to 30 years now. And especially when I run programs like we're currently doing, I'm running a carnivore challenge right now. Every time I run these, whether it be a cleanse or a keto program or a level up program, many at a time, often the goal is, even though we all want to get healthier, often the, the main priority, the goal is the weight loss. So I don't, dis, I don't discount the value and the importance for many of us to be able to get to our ideal weight. Yet all through this, these experiences, I'm always kind of taking notes, taking notes on who's winning, who's not winning, and what, what are the obstacles? And these are big, big time problematic issues or the obstacles that inhibit us, that hold us back from reaching and getting the goals that we really want, whether it be from just getting healthy and or weight loss. So with that being said, as we go today, I'm also going to provide you with a checklist. So if you're one of the people out there that you are looking forward to either getting to your ideal weight, dropping a couple pounds, or maybe you've had some challenges doing it in the past, check out the checklist near the end. I'm going to methodically walk through a checklist before you end up quitting. And I don't mean that to call you out or challenge or anything, but literally, I understand that I've done this literally with thousands of people, and I understand the roadblocks in understanding the situation that you and your body might be in right now in order to understanding this is why I've came up with the checklist. All right. With that being said, keep doing your thing. Keep sharing out. Keep spreading the love. This is going to be a great episode for, I think, for a lot of people to hear, even if they're doing okay and they just want to understand the journey of weight loss a little bit better here. A little bit to help you understand the preface here. So we are in the middle of running a a carnivore challenge. I call it a level up challenge where we're doing a carnivore style and we're having some amazing results with some people. And then of course, some people aren't getting results. So is it the carnivore that's making the difference or is it what we're about to talk about? And I'm going to tell you that yes, any elimination diet you do out there for a period of time, we'll talk about time in just a moment, whether you're doing literally a vegetarian diet, a keto diet, Mediterranean diet, a carnivore, a carnivore style diet, all of them work primarily because you are eliminating all of the bad stuff. The moment we eliminate all the bad stuff, your body has a better opportunity to get back to its ideal weight because it's not always in defense mode. And that's, we don't talk about it that way, but often if your body's in defense mode, it's not going to be in let go mode. So let's do, let's, let's do this over the next couple of minutes here. Let's think about how do you play the game to win? win the game of getting healthy and helping your body get to its ideal weight. And then along the way, inevitably, there may be roadblocks. And that is what the checklist is for. So you can check in on the checklist and say, oh, I got it. I know what I need to tackle next. And therefore, we can keep this journey going instead of just saying, man, I tried another thing. I tried another program. I tried another this, that, or the other. And I'll walk through all those as well. All right. Again, once again, thank you for being here. And I appreciate the support you guys get. I love the feedback that we get. So keep doing that. Uh, of course, share it out. Like uh, like it. Give us a, a rating. All of those good things are definitely beneficial um, to helping spread the, spread the word here about health being simple. Remember it is. This, this whole idea of health over years have gotten a little complicated. And I think part of it, and this and this leads right into this, that somehow, some way we believe that we're not supposed to have symptoms and that we should be able to fix our health and everything overnight. And that's not the truth, folks. Anyone tells you to fire them, get rid of them, avoid them, all of those programs, say overnight, lose weight, all of those things, or have your pain go away in 15 seconds with this magical drug or lotion or potion, drop all of that. It's not the way that it works. Our health is very simple. The complexity behind the job of making of making things happen is always is not necessarily easy, but the concept is very simple. All right, so let's walk this let's walk this backwards here. Well, let's walk it down when it comes to weight loss and women. All right, so we'll start with the checklist. First of all, if we want to lose weight, inevitably, inevitably, there's going to be need to be at some point a little bit of a caloric deficit. 
literally we're going to have to eat less calories. I'm not suggesting a starvation diet. I'm suggesting that as suggesting as you start to put clean food into your body, inevitably, when you take the crap out, the high caloric, uh, you know, foods, bread, muff muffins, pastas, crackers, etc., you're going to end up eating less calories, even though you're eating more dense food. And that's why it can't be an and world. You can't have the good food and the bad food. There's way too many calories. So inevitably, to lose weight, you're going to have to be in a caloric deficit, which means you're going to have to have less calories coming into your body than you did before in order to lose weight. Let me give you some rough, uh, rough example. About 3,500 calories usually equates to about one pound. So if you had a caloric deficit each day of about 500 calories in one week, that would be 3,500 calories. And then in one week, you would lose one pound. A 500 calorie a caloric deficit for most of us in a day would be significant. So that would probably mean someone like myself, maybe, maybe I do about 2,000 calories a day. Most likely, I, I don't do that many, but nonetheless, maybe that many. If I took away 500, that would be 25% of my caloric intake. I'd be in a deficit per day. If I do that over the course of a week, most likely I'm going to lose a pound. If you're doing that, that's why we have this checklist. We're going to go down this checklist. And I know there's people out there that are going to scream, it's only about caloric intake. It's beyond that. It just tells me they're not probably practicing with people and understand the following. There's going to be uh, six things on this checklist. These six things all play a role. So number one, we should be in a caloric deficit. I'm also going to tell you this. Starvation diets do not work, meaning you're just trying to starve yourself. Only 500 calories today. We can also create such a deficit, such a big gap that your body actually goes into a stress mode. So there's a frequency we have to play with here. There is a volume. If you go from 3,000 calories a day down to zero, maybe short term, a couple of days, maybe a week or something like that, you might see the benefits of losing some weight because you've restricted your calories. But oftentimes that will turn into a stressor for your body and then your body starts to hold on to it. And we noticed a lot of this in the past with things like the ketogenic diet, where we were, we were counting carbohydrates and restricting them. And then people decided, well, I lost some weight because I got my carbs under 30 net grams. And often that worked for everybody. We, we started shedding weight off of our bodies. The challenge is everyone stuck with it every day is that they were supposed to be in that low caloric intake uh, when it comes to carbohydrates every single day. And then we discovered this started to backfire. So in when we do have caloric deficits, it's not every single day. There's going to be times that it naturally should ebb and flow, and you can't sustain a caloric deficit diet because then you're going to eventually be at zero, and that doesn't work for human health. So number one in your checklist, are you in a caloric deficit? This might require you know, a couple of weeks of just monitoring what you bring into your body. I'm not a huge tracker. If you follow my podcast much, you've listened to some of my teachings, or if, you're, if you've caught me at one of my seminars on, on my speaking tour... I, I rarely will say, hey, let's track your micros and let's track your macros. I do not think that eating should be a math game. I think we should be able to do it intuitively. And yet all often it is beneficial to have a period of time, 14 days, 20 days, something like that, where you are tracking. And sometimes it is such a, such a lesson. Uh, it's, it's such a teacher for us because we go, wow, I didn't realize those little things, those little snacks that are coming in and out of my body or even out of my mouth, I should say, uh, added up to so many calories through the end of the day. All right. So number one, are you in a caloric deficit? Number two, are you allowing enough time? I would say that for the most part, this is the biggest challenge when it comes to females. Females, listen close. We're going to do a little deep dive here. And if you get this, you're going to be able to make this entire journey for your lives in weight loss and weight gain and getting to be a healthier, stronger human being much easier. Here's where it's different between men and women. Men, we do not go through three hormonal changes per, per month. In females, especially cycling, cycling females, you're still getting your menstrual cycle every month. You're going to go to three very distinct different hormone changes per month. You're going to have the first 14 days, your follicular phase. Uh, that, you know, 12, 13, 14 days, and then two or three days of ovulation. And then the last half of the month, anywhere from maybe another 12 days or so, you're going to go into your luteal phase. Those three phases, we're going to break down real quickly when you can and 
when you should expect some weight loss if you're doing everything right and times you should not be expecting weight loss and potentially a little bit of gain even hear me closely if you're doing everything right so let's go to that part first because this is where many people have challenges they You've decided to hunker down and you're going to do this new program. Maybe you're doing something like we're offering right now and you're doing a level up challenge where you do it carnivore style. And all of a sudden you notice that in the first 10 days, you didn't lose any weight. You're even trying to be in a caloric deficit or you're paying attention. You know, you're not overeating. You're eating pretty damn good. And you're actually gaining a pound or two as you start this new journey. Ladies, if you're in your luteal phase, the second half of the month, right up leading up to where you get your period before your menstrual cycle starts. That is when your body is going to be doing its absolute best to raise levels of progesterone, which is a growth hormone. You're going to be holding on to things. Your body's already sloughing off millions and preparing to slough off millions and millions of cells. And in that moment, your body's not going to try to let go of anything else. And it's certainly not going to try to let go of your nutrients. In fact, this is the time of the month that your body actually wants a little bit more carbohydrates. And from a health perspective, I often recommend allowing your body to bring them in. Now, listen, I'm not talking about bread, muffins, pasta, crackers. Never misinterpret what I say, carbohydrates, I mean that crap. I'm talking about maybe bringing in a sweet potato, maybe bringing in some fruits, berries. Maybe that's when you have an apple or a banana. I'm talking about healthy foods that's still from, from God's garden. But in that luteal phase, your body will hold and this is where time becomes such an, uh, an issue, especially with women and weight loss programs. Again, the goal is to become healthy. The side effect of being healthy is weight loss. So we always have to go back to that. So if we run into a stumbling block first, do we have a caloric deficit? If we don't, it's going to be difficult to lose weight. Number two, are we allowing enough time? And especially for the female cycle, ladies, listen close to this next statement. If you have weight loss goals, you have to, at minimum, put them in 30-day windows, minimum, absolute minimum. Do whatever you're going to do, but make the commitment to yourself, mentally and emotionally, 30-day commitment. What would I recommend? 120 days. 120 days of understanding that your body is in cycles. So the first 10, 14 days of the month, get after it, girl. Go get it. Go get your exercise on. Get your intermittent fasting going on. You know, tighten it up. Get carnivore, good fats, good proteins. Get after it. Get your, get going. You're going to see your body drop weight during that phase. Once ovulation hits, you still got a little shot at it. You might be, might be able to. Then all of a sudden, it's going to stick like a brick. It's going to hold on. And then you need about two more weeks until the menstrual cycle gets through again. But during that luteal phase, most likely you're not going to lose weight. So hold the, hold the line. Absolutely. Do good habits. Yes, because it's setting you up. It's preparing you to win once you get back into the follicular phase. So if you understand that as a woman, give yourself a little bit of grace and recognize time needs to be your asset, not your liability. And most people, I've been doing this long enough, most of us. We don't start losing weight two days in, three days in, four days in. Our minds are freaking out. We're checking the scale. Now we're, now we're not only disappointed, we're mad. And that's just not fair. You, you can't be that hard on yourself. It's just not fair. You're set, you, you can't win that game. So let's move forward here. So that's number two in the checklist. Number three is this. If you've done that, if you've done well and you've done, you, you're getting some, you're doing caloric deficit and you're paying attention to your natural rhythm and your cycle of your body and your hormones. And the next three, the number three is this. We got to check into your gut health because if you're doing the first two things right, there's a good chance that you're going to be losing some, some degree of weight if you're getting healthier, if you're putting the right foods into your body. The third is your gut health. Now, I'll tell you right away that I consider everyone has an abnormal, unhealthy gut. Everybody, not some people, not kind of, sort of, but everyone has some level of leaky gut. And what that means to us is that we're constantly creating a certain degree, a certain level of inflammation, systemic inflammation, which means we're sticky. The more inflamed we are, the more things are sticking in our body, even though you're doing really good things. So in the event you've done the first two things really good, know that the next thing you got to work on is your gut health. And there's very, very specific ways. And we don't have enough time in this podcast, but this is this is why I'm on tour right now. We're going around the country speaking to doctors, teaching people up to teaching other doctors to help their patients learn about how to heal leaky gut. And when you do that, I will tell you, 
your life will change. How do I know that's worked for me? It's worked for thousands of other people. Metabolically, the biggest change I, that made in my life, the most fat I've ever lost and stayed leaner, I'm leaner now at 54 than I've ever been in my life. And it's not because I train harder, I promise you. I know it sounds kind of sad, but nonetheless, I train smarter, I don't train harder, and yet my gut is healthier. And that allows me to be in the best health of my life, which then allows me to be at my ideal weight. I can't ring that bell enough to say that we have to get healthy to get at our ideal weight. If you are sustaining an unhealthy weight, it just means that you're not at your fully strongest version of health yet. All right. So that's number three. I'll give you a little story. I want to give you this analogy. It's just anything to help you let this sink in because I think it'll take a lot of pressure off of frustration that you're doing all this good work, but it's not working. Let's imagine. So health and wealth are not that much different. Let's imagine today uh, you're trying to build more wealth in your life and you go out and you get a great job. It's a high paying job and you're putting tons of value in tons of effort every day, you're working overtime and you wake up in the morning after day one, you look in your bank account, isn't any bigger. And then you do it again. And after day two, you go in, you're kicking ass, you're working really hard and you're, you're, you're putting in a lot of value. And again, you're working overtime, you're doing more than you've ever done before. And you look at your bank account, man, it's barely budget, but you wouldn't do that because you wouldn't do that two days into the job. You wouldn't do that two days into the job and expect that the bank account changes much because you're smarter than that. But we still, for some reason, we ask our bodies to do that. Now, let's just say you check and you're two months down the road. Come on, doc, we got we should be seeing a little bit of our bank account move, and I would agree. But in the event that you're not, it does not mean, let's just say you go two months down the road and you haven't seen your bank account budge at all, but you're working harder than you ever have in your life. Does it mean quit your job? Hell no, it does not mean quit your job. It means you might, and most likely, have debts to pay off. Maybe your debts, what you owe is much higher than what you're making. Therefore, your bank account can't grow. What does that look like in health? That means we have challenges. We have imbalances. You got to fix your gut. Even though you have all these good things going on, you still have to go back and fix your gut. And it leads me to the next checkbox here is your hormones. And this is where the rubber can hit the road. So the checkbox may mean that if you don't see the scale moving again, the scale, the weight is the side effect of us getting healthy. And we're using this checklist so we don't lose our minds and just quit the job, right? It's a good job. Let's keep it going. Let's keep do, putting that effort in. If you want to see the bank account move, you want to see your health, you want to see the scale move, then we have to kind of do a little bit deeper dive and look, oh, we got too many debts here. What are the debts? Leaky gut, inflammation in the body, and the hormonal compartment here. I'm not really talking about estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. I know that's where everyone goes, but that's not the hormone imbalance what we have a problem with. We have a problem with insulin. Insulin is a hormone. And most specifically, the, the biggest challenge out there is either having full-blown insulin resistance or even it's just the writings on the wall. How do we know? Frankly, the best way to know is to do a lab test. We'd run these lab tests on every single patient we'd run labs on because if you have insulin resistance, it's in the background causing problems with everything in your health. Specifically, it's inhibiting you from being the best version of yourself, the healthiest version of yourself. It's relationship to weight loss is as follows. I'm gonna make this as simple as I possibly can. It's not exactly this, so don't, if you're a practitioner out there, don't holler and yell at me, but it works like this. Insulin is a fat storage hormone. It can also take, so really what it does is, if we put food in the body and the food's broken down, eventually it's made into sugar of some sorts. Let's just say it's a piece of bread. Take a piece of bread in, goes in the stomach, your body digests it, sends it into the bloodstream as a source of sugar immediately, glucose. Insulin runs up there and grabs on your, your pancreas release insulin. It grabs onto the sugar, takes it out of the bloodstream. And if you need it for energy, like you're out moving and grooving, it'll put it into a cell and you can utilize it. If you are not, unless to say you just ate dinner and you're just sitting on the couch, then your body just stores it into a fat cell. So here's what you need to know about insulin. Insulin is a fat storage hormone. And when we eat, it will take, if you have a lot of insulin, then you have a lot of insulin storing fat into your cell. So when we have insulin resistance, it's the equivalent of this. Let's just say, for example, one person who does not have insulin resistance eats a slice of bread and they release one molecule of insulin. So we have one piece of bread, one 
molecule of insulin and it's a one-to-one -one relationship. So you're only gonna store potentially one little piece of that bread as fat. If you have insulin resistance, you've eaten carbs and sugar and all of those things for the, the, the better part of your life and less, listen, you have. In our country here, we wake up eating carbohydrates with cereal, bread, muffin, pasta, crackers, all that kind of stuff. And then we have uh, you know, a sandwich at lunch and then at dinner, maybe we have pasta or bread or muffins or, or potatoes again. The majority of the Americans li lives have 75 to 85 to 95% carbohydrates from literally when we start eating solid food. So we have this going on for a long period of time. Insulin resistance takes, takes actually years to develop, but once you develop it, it's in play until we correct it and we can. So what happens if you have insulin resistance? This is the hormone imbalance that affects weight loss, probably the most significant of all of your hormones. It comes down to insulin resistance and the type of food you're putting in your body. If you have insulin resistance, you eat one slice of bread instead of one molecule of insulin, you develop five. So you literally store five times as much into the fat cell for the exact same piece of bread. That's the challenge. That's when we start to say things like, I used to be able to eat this, do this, and the weight would come off. And all of a sudden, now we blame it on age. We say it must be my hormones, and we're looking at the wrong hormones. This is not about progesterone or estrogen or testosterone. This is about the insulin, a hormone called insulin. If you have any signs of insulin resistance, your weight loss goals most likely will, will be inhibited significantly. The good news Many of the programs that are available out there, no different than the one I'm running right now, something like our, our carnivore style program here where we're eating mostly animal proteins. That's part of how you correct insulin resistance. We just have to understand that there's a process here and it might not work like a magic wand in the first 10 days. So our checklist now, we're looking at things like caloric deficit. Are you allowing enough time, especially if you're a female and understanding what time of month you are at when it comes to your hormones, follicular, ovulation, your luteal phase. Remember, luteal phase, you're likely not going to lose weight during that time. And then are there, are there, do you have things like leaky gut causing inflammation? And if these things are there, it doesn't mean quit your job, folks. It means keep doing your thing because they're going to help you get to overcome these other challenges like leaky gut, like insulin resistance. This is how we do it. We just add a couple things here. And then last but not least, well, there's one or two more things here. The, one of the last things is your mental health and your emotional health. And really, it is more of a question. Is, are you playing the game of weight loss fairly? I would say that most people are not. What do I mean by that? You do one action, you get on the scale and say it doesn't work. Do one action, get on the scale, doesn't, doesn't work. And then you beat yourself up emotionally. You let that scale determine, you literally let that scale determine how you're going to feel that day. That is not fair, folks. Do I think that this really happens? I think it happens to everybody, everybody, including myself to some degree. We get a little bit high if it moves in the right direction and a little bit low or a lot of it low if it doesn't move in the direction that we want. So if we understand that that's the type of game we're playing, maybe we can step back and give ourselves a little bit of grace and understand that I also have to measure properly. So that is number six on the checklist. So first, are we playing the game fairly? Are we putting all of our eggs in the basket of what that scale, the number that scale kicks out? So this is just a checklist. Are you playing this game fairly? Yes or no? If it comes up a little bit higher, a little bit low, is it completely change your day emotionally? Give that, give it a check. <clears throat> yes or no? If the answer is yes, then we got to go to number six. And then, at, and then number six is this in the checkbox. How are you measuring? <clears throat> How are you measuring this journey of health? We have to do it in many different ways. And I, we'll, we'll end up wrapping it up on this one. So we have to allow ourselves to look at many different components when it comes to our health. What is your muscle mass? Unfortunately, right now, we have a tremendous amount of people, millions of people right now across our country, losing weight massively because of certain drugs that they're using. And I get it. I know they help some people. They help them emotionally and physically. But what do we know about muscle mass? And, and, and we know that muscle mass right now might be the single, single most important marker when it comes to longevity, about feeling good over the long haul. And we also know that these drugs are inhibiting and decreasing, decreasing massively the amount of muscle mass in different people. You notice I didn't use any names here. I'm not trying to beat anything up, but I think most of you understand that. And those, those are short-term wins because it's not going through this checklist. Is it making you healthier? No. Is it just changing the scale? Yes. So really all it is changing 
is the emotional component of this. But I'm asking you to do things a little bit different. I'm suggesting that you do it a little bit different and make sure that you're measuring properly your muscle mass. How are you feeling? That's always an interesting question. I recognize this. You take the crap out of your diet. You go on a no crap diet, carnivore, Mediterranean, keto, vegetarian. You all of a sudden start just feeling better, right? You start to feel better, move better. You have less inflammation, less pain in your body. You start to feel better. Somehow we often lose count of this. I want to make sure that you pay attention to this. How are you sleeping? I know when you get alcohol out of your life, you start to sleep better. I know that when you get the chemicals and the toxins out of your life, you start to feel better, move better, think better, all of the above. Make sure you are measuring these components as well, because otherwise you are stuck into this very, very limited trap, trap of that scale is going to determine how good your day is. And that's not fair. you got to give yourself a little bit of grace. And using this checklist, that's the, that's the goal here. I'm going to Go one step farther here and make a couple quick comments. If you are in perimenopause or menopause, whether you're doing a weight loss program or you're just trying to have good habits in your life and you're wondering why maybe your weight loss goals are not working out. If you are in perimenopause, there's, those are the years that five to 10 years leading up to menopause. In menopause, you are, you're technically in menopause when you have gone 12 months with no cycle. During that phase of your life leading up that, basically let's call it a decade as you're going through change, there are some certainties that are, everything boils down to basically your liver and your liver needs to get all of the junk out of your body. That's the reason you have hot flashes, you're hot, cold, whatnot. And listen, it doesn't mean that you were doing things worse. It is at a, a transition phase of your life. This is happening. This is a major moment in your life and the liver needs to purge itself. So your tolerance and your, listen, there's, I'll basically say it this way. There's no more room for alcohol in your life in perimenopause. So you're 40, 45 plus years old. Alcohol has got to go bye-bye. Or you can expect to continue to experience many of these symptoms of ill health. You're not going to feel good. You're going to continue to be moody. You're going to continue to gain weight, continue to inflame. Your gut's going to get worse. All of those things. And this is just real, folks. I know this is not favorable to hear, but nonetheless, I think it'd be better to hear the truth and have someone go, oh, it's okay. You can continue to, to be fooled by the idea you can keep putting junk and crap in your body and alcohol and think you can get a different outcome. It doesn't work that way. So getting your body, getting the chemicals out, getting the toxins out, eating cleaner, all of these things will be required as your body, especially your liver, is trying to cleanse. All right, quick review, and then we're wrapping this one up. All right, so a checklist. You, you have a weight loss goals. You're trying to see if you're moving and grooving in the right direction. We know we have to have some level of a caloric deficit. Roughly, if you did 500 calories per day in over a, a week, you'd probably lose about a pound, which is the ideal recommended amount of weight that we should be losing, one to one and a half pounds per week at max for a couple of weeks in a row. So one, caloric deficit. Two, are you giving yourself enough time? And specifically to females, we have to recognize what time of the month is it for you, knowing in your luteal phase very unlikely if you're going to lose weight during that time, but it doesn't mean you aren't setting yourself up to really start to rapidly lose weight as soon as you get through that phase and back into your follicular phase. Number three, gut health. Yeah, got to heal it up. Most of it, everyone has some level of leaky gut unless you've healed it up in the past and it can come back overnight. Literally one day of using aspirin opens up the leaky junk, the tight junctions, and now you have leaky gut. That'll create inflammation. That means everything you eat after that 24 hours is going to stick into your body different than it did the day before. So are you healing up your gut? Is your gut in optimal health? Number four, hormone imbalance. Which one am I talking about? Insulin resistance. Get it tested. You can call our office. We will send you a requisite. I don't care what state you live in. We will send you a requisite. You go get the lab work done. We can sit down, decide, figure out if you have the writing on the wall or if you have full-blown insulin resistance and then strategize how to fix it. Personally, I will tell you, fix your gut, fix your insulin resistance. You will fix and change the course of your life and everything gets a little bit easier after that. I promise you. Uh, hormone balance, we just mentioned that's insulin resistance. Number five, would are you playing the game properly? Are you playing to win? Are you playing it fairly? Yes or no? Are you putting all of your eggs in the basket of what that scale says in the morning? I'm okay with measuring, but being gentle and having some grace for yourself, I think is also important. And last but not least, how are you measuring? Make sure that you're measuring things that measure up to find out if you're becoming a healthier, happier, stronger human being. All right. That was a lot to throw at you this morning. I know it's a little bit longer this, this afternoon. Hopefully this podcast hits you, hits you in a place where it finds a place where it just helps you on this journey of your health, on this journey of, if it is weight loss, awesome, but this journey of becoming 
of actually of understanding who you are a little bit better and making the journey a little bit easier for you. All right. With that being said, thanks for being here once again. I look forward to seeing you in the next podcast.